Okay, boys and girls, today we are taking a look at the best knives to buy going into the year 2022. Now, I've tried to pare down this list to make it a little less comprehensive than last year, but I still think there are quite a few solid options and pretty good choices. So, before we get into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like this. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so we're going to start off with folders and uh, kind of just overall Swiss Army knives because there's a lot of demand on the channel and there's a lot of guys and gals that run Swiss Army knives. So the best one if you are looking to either get a new Swiss Army knife or just look at look at expanding your line, or maybe you just don't have one. In my opinion, the best Swiss Army knife to get into the collection uh, for wilderness and outdoors use is going to be the Victorinox Ranger. Now, this one does look a lot like a Huntsman, but just slightly thicker. And uh, the Ranger does is actually basically just a Huntsman, but the additions, the notable additions, are the fact that it adds a file to the Huntsman, and it also adds a very nice, very useful... Um, chisel. So this thing is very useful, especially when paired with the saw to do different things like dovetail joints and other such functions. So the Victorinox Ranger is definitely the number one Swiss Army knife I would recommend going into the year. Okay, so now looking at some budget-oriented knives. So the first budget-oriented knife for me is going to be the Mora Knives or Mora Neve or Mora the more knife uh, constable and so this is not a new knife it has certainly been around for many years actually I do think this handle color this is the orange is a newer handle color but the overall blade is the same basic blade that was released in 2016 so not a new blade by any stretch of the imagination but a very solid and very proven option uh, and choice so this is a really fantastic blade not only is it uh, very useful very usable uh, with its kind of dual grind so you have a very slicey thinner uh, stock of metal at the front for doing things like game processing and stouter kind of uh, back end of the blade for doing things like feather sticking and batoning, but you also have a rubberized handle that is very grippy and very temperature neutral. So for times like now, like it's winter, uh, it is very comfortable to hold this blade and it's not going to be as cold as other handle materials. So that is the Kunzbull. Now this one is set up also with a ferro rod and the sharpener on the back, but you can get this in many different flavors, colors, and options. So that is the Kunzbull by Mora. Okay, so the next one is the Condor Pterosaur. Now, this one is really what I would consider if you don't want to go for the stainless steel option of the Cons Bull, if you don't really like that. If you want something like a high, car if you want a high carbon blade, the Condor Pterosaur is really the blade for you. Uh, this blade is once again under fifty dollars. You can get it in many different flavors or colors, but it is going to have that ten ninety five high carbon steel. And overall, this is a very excellent, very proven blade. I have. Uh, processed game animals, firewood, done just about any bushcrafting, uh, just about any bushcrafting task with this blade. And uh, it's very capable, very competent. The only thing you really have to watch is because this is an untreated blade as a whole, uh, it is prone to rust even up here on the kind of non-ground portion of the blade. But overall, this is a very fantastic option. And it's very similar to the Mora Garberg, Mora Kunzbull, um, in its kind of plastic handle. One advantage it does also have over the Kunzbull is that it is a full tang, so you can see the tang sticks out on the other end. But that's not necessarily a deal breaker. Uh, the Mora is more than durable, and I know that. Uh, so. So overall, really fantastic option if you're looking for another budget blade. Both of these come in under 50 bucks, and they are really solid tools. That will not let you down. Okay, so those are kind of three more budget-oriented. Uh, the Victorinox is kind of in its own class, but definitely the two fixed blades are more budget-oriented. will help you get into bushcraft if you're not. These are very solid choices, and you can use them for years. So the next one for me is going to be the Bark River Knives. The next one for me is going to be the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now this is a blade that I've had for many years and it's 
that I would label a blade to grow with. So if you are taking bushcrafting or wilderness self-reliance more seriously and you want something to help grow and you know as you refine your skills have a more refined tool, something like the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter is a really solid choice for that. Now this is the original Bushcrafter in CPM 3V and it's also smaller than the Bushcrafter 2, but you can get this in many different handle options. And like I said, they make the Bushcrafter 2, the Bushcrafter Ultralight, which is slightly thinner, which I personally like the uh, 530 seconds blade thickness the most, but either way, whatever fits your needs the best, the Bushcrafter Ultralight and 2 do exist. I just prefer the Bushcrafter number one, and I prefer it in its original steel of CPM 3V. And uh, I think 3V is a fantastic wood steel, and I've talked about that in other videos, so I won't talk about it here. But the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter in its many different flavors is a more expensive blade, but a very good blade to grow with. Okay, so the next one as a blade to grow with is going to be the Three Dogs Knives or 3DK MAK or Multi Animal Knife. And this one is coming out of Anchorage, Alaska, but this blade is very similar in overall size, design, and kind of idea as the Bushcrafter. The only primary advantage the only primary advantage over the Bushcrafter that this one has is the fact that it's very customizable from the factory. So you can get different handle options, different blade steels, but you're still getting the same knife. You can also get it customized to have the edge, or sorry, the spine sharpened for striking. You can also get the uh, back of the tang sharpened for striking. There's just a lot of customizability from factory with this blade, and they can really make it the way that you want it to be for you so you can get a blade that you want to use and uh, will serve you well. So 3DK, uh, this one is set up with a tan G10 handle and a green Kydex sheath, but they also have leather sheaths as well, depending on what you want to run. So like I said, tons of options, super customizable. Uh, my, my blade in particular is made out of K110, uh, so it's a little bit more of a carbon tool steel. Um, and that's just why I tend to go with naturally with things like CPM 3V. But uh, overall, it's a really fantastic blade, whatever option you get it in. And this is a blade that you'll be able to grow with. And once again, you'll be able to process natural resources, process firewood, baton, without any fear on this one. This one, like I said, similar to the Bushcrafter, is also 530 seconds uh, thick. So very good. It's stout without being too stout. It's uh, able to do a lot of fine task skills without it being crazy uh, thick or overbuilt. So this is a really solid option and like I said it follows the Bushcrafter in many different specifications. I'd say the only primary difference really is the uh, flat grind as opposed to the convex scanty grind of the BRK Bushcrafter. So that is the top five Bushcraft knives that I recommend buying going into the year 2022. These are really solid options, whether you pick up a budget blade or a more expensive blade, I don't think you'll be disappointed with any of these choices. Like I said, the only push that I would say to getting a more expensive blade is higher performance and they're going to help you as you learn to get more fine tooth or fine detailed with your skills as a bushcrafter, you will probably want something that's just a little bit higher performance. Um, I do have videos breaking down more expensive knives versus cheaper knives. There isn't a whole lot of differences, but like I said, really it just comes down to the knit and grit kind of detail work. And if you want to be able to do, you know, the best possible job, the more expensive knives will deliver more consistent results. But these guys are certainly not bad choices at all. I highly recommend them. Uh, even the uh, even the Mora Knives uh, Bushcraft Black is a fantastic option. Anyways guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.